Hello, I'm Eric Guido with the Morel Wine Group, and today I am sitting here with Claudia Cigliuti of Fratelli Cigliuti in Neve Barbaresco. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, I was wondering if you could start off by telling us a little bit about the history, the early beginnings of your family, and how Fratelli Cigliuti uh, came to be. Okay, you see, my father is the fourth generation, actually, the, the family owned this property, making wine, uh, located in Neve, and more exactly on the crew of Saravuela. And uh, my father actually started to work in the vineyards when he was very young. So he just attended the uh, primary school, which is an elementary school. So it means that at 10 years old, uh, he immediately started to work uh, in his vineyards with his father and his uncle, who gave the name to the winery, the Fratelli Cigliuti. He started to go to this production in 1964. To, uh, he started with 300 bottles, so it was a very small production at the beginning. And, uh, and uh, step by step he started to bottle everything and the 67 has been the first vintage with the label that we are still using now. So what inspired your father to begin bottling Barbaresco in a region where most people were farmers? Yes, so he started to bottle because uh, before the 60s he used to, they used to sell an unbottled wine to local private customers. So the families from Turin and uh, uh, from the mountains uh, used to come in Langer region to, to buy their own uh, wine and bottle by themselves. Um, the quality at the time uh, was, uh, was normally uh, very bad on the market, unfortunately. A lot of negociant. So he needed to differentiate himself from the rest of these uh, old bulk uh, production sold uh, around and this was the only way bottling is production so bottling uh, the wine and mint have a better quality in the bottle there's also i've been told a connection between your father and bartolo mascarello in the creation of a, a group named piccoli pretori grandi vini can yeah. you tell us a little bit about that yes Actually, yes, my father was a good friend of Bartolo Mascarello and uh, in the 70s my father, he, he, he met a few other producers who were focusing on quality and, uh, and these producers uh, are Giorgio Rivecchi from La Spinetta, uh, Luciano Sandrone, uh, Pelissero uh, and um, uh, Malvira from Roero. So uh, all these producers were at that time uh, not not popular, not famous, so they needed uh, uh, to make this association of producers a better name. So they asked my father if he knew somebody, and my father was a good friend of Bartolo Mascarello. So uh, they invited him to be part of this uh, group, and uh, he accepted. So in this way, they started to attend the first uh, wine fair. So this was the beginning uh, of uh, uh, our export. So this has been a very good, uh, a good uh, thing for the future because uh, uh, going to the wine fair, they started to be the first importer. The first market uh, has been uh, United States, actually Switzerland and uh, Germany. And uh, uh, this was the, the opportunity that let us uh, survive uh, from, uh, <laughs> from that uh, time because it was very hard at the time to sell uh, more expensive wines because the people just care about the price and not the quality at all. So this, uh, and also this, uh, this little group uh, was uh, meeting very often, tasted the wines together and they, they were, uh, when a wine was good, they were asking, ah, oh, wow, this is fantastic, how did you make it? So it was also a kind of uh, um, friendship to, to help each other to make better and better and better. There, there's been some misconception in the past that your Barbaresco was more of a modern style of wine, back when Barolo and Barbaresco were often described between modern and traditional. What would have led people to believe that it was a, a modern wine, especially now as we know it isn't? Yeah. I think that uh, uh, sometimes uh, uh, people make the, the con confusion between uh, the concentration of the fruit uh, and uh, the, um, the aging uh, uh, way of the wine. So my father has been a, a modernist in the vineyards because um, he has been uh, one of the first in the 60s that, that understood uh, to, to reduce the yields to get a better quality, which means better concentration, more structured wines. 
Uh, but uh, um, the work in the cellar has always been in the made it traditional way. So he always uh, used to age, uh, uh, sorry, to ferment the, the grape for about 20 days and uh, age uh, in a Slavonian oak uh, cask. Um, so this, this was actually what uh, he was doing. Modernist in the vineyards, <laughs> but uh, uh, conservative in, uh, and traditional in, in the cellar. Another thing that everyone notices in Barbaresco and Barolo is how uh, the, the daughters, the, the women of the region, have really stepped up and are really a driving force behind the wines these days. I'm wondering, with you and your sister, what, what inspired you to get involved in the winery and, and what gave you the passion to begin making Barbaresco? Actually, yes, these are uh, the size of our winery stayed very small because uh, my father had two daughters. So uh, at the time, uh, uh, for a farmer, having uh, mean, not a son uh, was uh, <laughs> very hard to accept. And um, so the size stayed small and my father actually really didn't uh, expect that my, me and my sister continue with this business. And uh, for us, uh, actually, it has been uh, something very natural. I, I, I think for both of us because uh, we finished our school. I actually even didn't attend the neurological school. Uh, my sister did. She's younger than me, and uh, and the decision was was natural because we have been involved when we were teenagers to work in the in the vineyards. Uh, in Italy, we have three months of holidays in summertime. Summertime is the busiest time in the vineyard, so it's a lot of work, and we were asked to help them, of course. And then uh, it, it was something that uh, we have so deep roof there. Uh, I'm the fifth generation, and um, I couldn't uh, believe to leave that uh, yard where we have the houses, where my father, my grandfather were born, and we have the cellar there, and all the vineyards around. So for me, leaving that place was, was not something that uh, was in my, my mind, absolutely. Your father was the only producer to have the name Sarabuela on the label up until only recently, correct? Yes, until 2001 uh, when uh, they started to um, talk about the officialization of the cruise and so he, some other producers uh, owning the vineyards on Sarabuela started to use uh, the, the name Sarabuela on the label. But for many years my father has been the, the only one. And quite often when Sarah Well is referred to, it's referred to as being a vineyard that has been proven to be a great terroir within the Barbaresco region. So essentially your father is the producer who justified this terroir to the rest of the region. Am I correct in saying that? Yeah. And is he still involved in the winery and the uh, vineyards? Yes. He always tell me I was born in the vineyards and I will die in the vineyards. So he's 81 now and still working very, very hard, uh, is his passion. So his passion and every day, every single day he spent in the vineyards. So he loved his work and uh, sometimes I tell him you should be a little bit more relaxed and I said, I can't. So, Two vintages that we have in front of us for the Cerebuela are the 2014 and the 2016. I was wondering if you could talk first a little bit about 2014 especially yeah. since many people have this conception that 2014 was not a good vintage, whereas Barbaresco seems to have performed very well. Could you tell us a little bit about the vintage itself? Yeah. In fact, the 2014 uh, reputation hasn't been the, the, the best uh, around the world, but uh, uh, for Barbaresco, actually, we, we can say that uh, we have been very lucky because uh, we have had one-third of the rains they had in Barolo area and no hail storms. While in uh, 2014 in Barolo area they had three times hail storm in summertime. Localized, depending on the area, of course, but uh, uh, if for them has been very challenging, depending from one area to another, in uh, Barbaresco area every single producer released the cruise. So it means that it's, it's a very good quality vintage. Of course, uh, was humid at the beginning of, uh, uh, of the summertime, so we needed to reduce the yields very strongly. So we, we really reduced a lot, much more than, for example, in 2016. But the quality is, is very good. 
we are very happy about the, the 14. They are very balanced uh, and elegant, but at the same time they have a good fruitness and good structure. So you really taste the, the ripeness of the fruit. Can you tell us a little bit about 2016, your expectations? Yes. 16 is, is a great vintage. It's, uh, it's really a great vintage because it seems that everything happened during the year, during the cycle of, of, the, um, of the vintage at the right time. So. Uh, the right uh, amount of uh, rains, uh, the warm at the right time, the warm summer but not too hot, and uh, we have had a, a very good uh, autumn, so September and beginning of October was, was warm, and, um, and a good uh, difference in temperature between night and day, which is perfect for Nebbiolo. So the 16 are um, very complex, uh, so and structured, so I, it reminds me a little bit of the 2004 vintage, the 16, how it was in the vineyards and, uh, and the timing of, of, the, of the, the harvest, uh, so it reminds me a little bit of the 2004, which is a great vintage. So Claudia, can you tell us anything about the, the future of Chiyuti? Uh, any plans of expanding, any, any special projects, things that we can look forward to? Yeah. So our project for the future is not to expand uh, so much because uh, uh, we like the small size because we are able to do all our works in the vineyards uh, directly by ourselves. We will, um, we will grow just uh, one more hectare because um, a neighbor uh, asked us to, to work his vineyard. Uh, came to my father last year and he said uh, my contract with uh, some other producers disappeared at the end of the year and I would love you to work my vineyards because how you work the vineyards uh, it's hard to see somebody else working so well the vineyards are how you do. So he has been a great compliment for us and uh, and uh, we go to this, uh, this actor, uh, this additional actor, which is located in Brico di Neve. We are going to replant it, so it will be a longer, <laughs> a longer project for the future. We have a longer contract of 20 years, so it means that uh, it will be there for quite a bit, but not, not uh, more than that. Well, I want to thank you for sitting with us and uh, answering our questions today. Uh, Claudia Cialuti. Uh, and their Barbaresco, which is, in my opinion, one of the greatest traditionally styled wines coming out of the region today. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.